851, turn right, heading 180. Hey everyone, I'd like to welcome you to another instalment in this What Is A Particular Aircraft series. You all have been absolutely killing it with the support on all these sorts of videos, and hence today I'm bringing you all a video discussing the A380-900. As you may know, in this particular series, I discuss aircraft that we never saw in the skies, but were either proposed, announced, talked about, and so on. So it is important to note that the aircraft I'm discussing never actually made it into the sky. Through these sorts of videos, I hope not only you can learn something new, but maybe you'll also find out about another type of aircraft you hadn't heard of before. Our focus today, as mentioned, is the A380-900. And you may get this confused with the A380neo, but just so you know, that they were two different propositions, as the A380neo was set to feature brand new engines and different features to enhance fuel efficiency, whereas the A380-900 was to focus heavily on the size and capacity. The A380neo was proposed all the way back in 2007, 11 years ago now, when John Leahy confirmed plans for this new variant of aircraft. It would seat more passengers than the A380-800, and in turn, have much more space. This particular A380 would have launched in 2020, and would be potentially capable of carrying 1,000 passengers. However, a lot of work would need to be done configuration-wise in order to achieve this goal. As Airbus noted, in an all-economy, it would be able to just fit more than 900. Over the years, the number increased and decreased, but a common number was found at 1,000. Unfortunately, this A380 was scrapped in May of 2010, but the Airbus Vice President at the time did say, we have a design for the A380-900 which can be reactivated at the appropriate time. Lufthansa and the Air France slash KLM group were actually the two main carriers or groups that were originally interested and did express their interest in a 1,000-seater version of the aircraft, which is obviously extremely interesting to note. This is especially in regards to the future of the Airbus A380. The A380-900 would measure in at 89.4 metres in length, which is more than a standard A380. Why was the A380-900 cancelled, or actually postponed? The decision to postpone the Airbus A380-900 came about because of the classic A380 and its development. While the interest for the aircraft was there, Airbus believed that their sole focus should have been placed on the A380-800, and potentially after they handled that aircraft, they could reanalyze the purpose of a Dash 900 and the business case. Now you see, this is where the whole linking in comes to play. There's always links in the aviation industry, as you may have noticed, and this A380 story isn't short of it. By 2015, the A380-900 had in fact re-emerged in discussions, but in the five years since it was postponed, Airbus had analyzed and changed some of the key features. One of those key features was the engines and those were the ones that were set to feature on the aircraft. Funny that, it's almost as if when I covered the A380neo on the channel, their story began in 2015, with the whole idea of new engines. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a card directing you to there in the top right of your screen. The industry trends not only meant that a 1000-seater A380 wasn't in demand as much, but airlines were calling for better efficiency, and this was something that the original A380-900 would not have had. In fact, you could certainly say it may have actually been worse than your standard Dash 800. Despite all this, we move back to 2014, when Airbus still eyed multiple A380 variants, stating, We will one day launch an A380neo, and one day launch a stretched A380. This, in turn, obviously launched speculation among many about what Airbus were truly planning. Interestingly enough, before I conclude, the A380-900 was meant to be a plan for Airbus when they launched the A380. Here's what Airbus Executive Vice President Tom Williams said to AusBT. The wings are in fact designed for a much larger airplane, so we have the capability of going to a bigger fuselage. We can stretch the fuselage very easily, he said. Adding, and we have airlines today who tell us they love the A380, but it's too small. Now, it's not an engineering issue. We can make it bigger. It's more of a question of what would be a good business case and where the market for this is. What he says here is very interesting in regards to the A380 and what its original purpose was and how Airbus adapted to industry demands. What are your thoughts on the A380-900 and do you believe ultimately the A380 Plus was the best option out of these possible variants?
Let me know in the comment section below, like always. I'd like to take the time now to thank you very much for tuning into this video, and I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. Racing all these broken dreams tonight, and we'll fly.